Flashpoint Batman shouldn't even exist. He is literally a time paradox, but for some reason, somehow, his universe, the Flashpoint universe, has come back into existence. And today, he's gonna figure out why that is and how it happened. This is the Comic Story and Channel, where I bring you audio dramas of your favorite comic books, allowing you to know what goes on in them so you know what to add to your collection by going to your local comic book store. Today we're going to be covering Flashpoint Beyond, issues 0 through 6, which is a storyline that came out over the course of last year and is potentially going to have giant ramifications in the DC Universe. The sounds of a ticking clock echo throughout the destroyed office while Batman stares at a chalkboard with words on it, hardly making any sense, even to him. This office belonged to Rip Hunter, the Time Master, and the notes scattered speak of some crisis coming. Batman looks around and finds a vault stating that this is it. And a voice tells him that if they manage to find it, then that means that others will too. And if the owners return, Batman steps into the vault. The Time Masters have their own problems right now, I'd believe. They'll never know that we were even here. Marionette says that she and Mime don't exactly trust him any more than he trusts them. Which he shouldn't. Mime lifts his hand and points a invisible gun at the back of Batman's head. Batman smacks it away. Put the gun away. We're here. Now which one of Dr. Hunter's gadgets is it? Marionette points to a snow globe with a broken watch around it, stating that one. That's Janie Slater's watch right there. Batman picks up the globe and watches it, telling himself that he shouldn't be doing this. He knows that, but he's doing it still. As Batman begins to leave, Marionette stops. Aren't you going to tell us what is so important about that thing? We all know how incredibly dangerous things here are. Batman continues walking out, not even answering her, and then stops at the chalkboard. There's one line on there that seems to get his attention amongst all the cryptic sayings. Thomas Wayne will die. Batman wipes those words off. And over in an entirely different universe, the world of Flashpoint, Thomas Wayne is woken up at his desk by Oswald Cobblepot. Hey, boss! Wake up! You need to sober up before... Before Thomas can even get his bearings, Harvey Dent kicks in the door, shouting, You need to do something about this mess that you've created! Look, Dr. Wayne has had a rough night! He was extremely upset about the charges levied against him. He just wants to make things right. Dent begins to go into an outrage, ranting and raving. He tells them that Gilda, his wife, won't even talk to anyone since Thomas became obsessed with Martha. Batman may have saved his daughter from that lunatic, but the trauma that Martha put her through, getting shot, watching Commissioner Gordon die, that Joker caused so many problems. And even with Martha dead, Debbie was haunted by that awful laughter. His little girl took her life because of that laughter. <laughs> Thomas sits up for a moment and thinks that this isn't right. All of this has been changed. Martha never became the Joker. Barry changed it all back. He fixed the timeline. This is wrong! Thomas gets up storming out without a word. And in the elevator, as everyone is yelling at him, from Oswald to Dent, his anger begins to grow. It begins to show, and it doesn't make any sense. Barry changed this world. I remember being ripped out of time by the reverse flash. Thawne turned me into a living paradox that shouldn't exist. Yet I do. I should be dead, and Bruce should be alive. But Bruce is still buried next to his mother. Thomas begins to think about the journey he just went through, learning about the multiverse and how all of it was created, and what alternate worlds mimicking his own would be like. But this isn't a mimicking world. This isn't an alternate reality. Darkseid didn't send him to a parallel Earth. This is home. This is my reality. What the hell is going on? Thomas stands over the graves of his wife and his son, the ghost of Martha laughing, asking, if he thought he saved their son. No, that was a dream. That's all, a wonderful little dream. <laughs> but there are bigger things at play right now. There's a war raging all across the globe between Wonder Woman and the Amazons against Aquaman and the Atlanteans. Not only that, you left this 
Superman to save this universe and he completely stepped back. Perhaps he's waiting for the other two superhumans to take each other out to begin his alien invasion. At least that's what the news thinks. But Thomas has other things to worry about, like how any of this even exists. He begins to look through the phone book to look up the address of this world's Barry Allen. And when he looks over his shoulder at the chalkboard with all the clues he's been putting together, Thomas reads the words, everything matters. And he asks, who wrote that? Is that you, Thon? Are you back? Is this revenge for me putting a sword through your spine? No, not here. Nothing matters here. Nothing matters! He destroys the chalkboard, ripping out the piece of paper with Barry Allen's address on it, and he grabs his gun. I am going to change all of this back, and I will save Bruce again, and I will kill whoever did this. That night, Barry returns to his home with a voice telling him that he blew it. Barry Allen turns around to fight Thomas Wayne sitting in the shadows, and he tells him that he knows him. He's the infamous Thomas Wayne. Thomas tells him that that's right. You remember me. Barry tells him, how couldn't I? Everyone knows about the famous Dr. Wayne. Thomas gets up. Do you not know? Look, what I'm about to say is going to sound insane, but I am Batman and Barry Allen is the Flash. You may have your mother and father, but your mother was murdered and your father was unjustly arrested for it. Years later, you got struck by lightning and became the fastest man alive, so fast that you could break the time barrier. You traveled to the past, saved your mother. Like a bullet through glass, you shattered history. The reverberations from your actions rippled backwards and forwards, reaching out to the people closest to you and changed their history. The world right now is drowning in chaos, but together we restored it. However, someone is undoing our work. We need to put things back to the way they should be. Barry stumbles back at the thought of losing his mother. And then he looks up, telling Thomas Wayne to get out of here. Get out of my apartment. Barry turns back to call the police and Thomas reaches into his jacket, pulling out a small syringe, sticking Barry with it, telling him, just relax. I just have to do things a bit differently now. So a short while later, Barry wakes up asking, where am I? And Thomas finishes the last trap that will lock Barry Allen in place, telling him, This is the tallest building in Gotham. Lightning cracks and lights up the sky, and Barry gets a glimpse of what Thomas is doing. He intends to hit Barry with lightning again, to give him back his powers. Thomas tells Barry that he's going to save people, everyone. You just need to endure this. Thomas flips on the switch to attract the lightning to the chair that Barry is hooked up to. But that's the moment that a bullet shoots through, shattering some of the canisters of the reagents that turned the Flash into what he is meant to be. It's at that moment that the lightning strikes Barry's chair, shooting all of that unfiltered electricity through Barry Allen's body. But this time, without the chemicals, the only thing that is left is the charred and burnt body of Barry Allen. Before Thomas could even try and figure out what happened, there are sounds of tires screeching and a sudden crash. He looks over to see the burning wreckage of a car, and he hears the sounds of a little boy calling to his father. Thomas rushes over to get the boy out, and that's when he sees on a name tag on one of the bodies, Harvey Dent. That means that the boy that he just saved is the child of Harvey Dent, Dexter Dent. As Thomas begins to pull the child away, the child points up shouting there. That's the man that shot those things and scared my papa. Thomas looks up to see an Atlantean assassin jumping from the rooftops, quickly catching up, asking, What are you doing? Who are you? Why did you kill Barry Allen? The Atlantean tells him that he was trying to hit him, but Thomas takes the spear gun and stabs the man in the arm, breaking his wrist. You're lying. Talk! The man informs him that it was Aquaman. Aquaman told him that Batman was going to use Barry Allen to change things. So Aquaman said to kill Batman. Thomas stops for a moment. He realizes what this means. Aquaman knows of this. But how? How does Aquaman know what's going on? The Atlantean tries to taunt Thomas, telling him that they're both killers and that they could work together. They could swap stories. Has Thomas ever watched a child die? 
Thomas screams in pain, thinking back to the night that he lost his son, and without realizing it, he bashes the Atlantean's head against the wall over and over until there's nothing but a bloody mess left there. Before long, the GCPD arrive on the scene to put the fire out from the crash. Thomas changes out of his costume, and the commissioner tells him that he just keeps catching a break, huh? Judge Dent is dead, and that means that the impending charges against him are... But Thomas looks over at Dexter, asking, Why was the boy even with Dent? Commissioner tells him that after what happened to his wife and daughter, Dent took Dexter everywhere with him, paranoid that something might happen. I guess the kid is now going to end up having child services picking him up. Thomas stares towards Dexter when there's a sudden rush of air and a blur that shoots by with the words, Thomas Wayne, over here, over here. However, before Thomas could even look, whatever caused that rush of air, whatever sped by as a blur, was gone. Meanwhile, back with Batman, he returns to the cave trying to make sense of what he saw in Rip Hunter's office. But a voice tells him that this isn't going to end well for him or his dad. Batman tells him that he has to go away, he doesn't care, and the voice says that what he is doing could threaten everything, all space and time, the divine continuum itself. The voice argues that no matter how many times that Batman has saved the divine continuum, he shouldn't do this, and that Rip Hunter is going to be furious when he finds out what happened. Corky Baxter sits up in one of the Batmobiles, revealing himself to Bruce Wayne. He tells him, don't say I didn't warn you, you just opened up a can of worms, and they're going to make you eat them. Meanwhile, back at the world, the Flashpoint, it is tearing itself apart. And while news reports start to come in about the destruction all over the world, Thomas Wayne set to eat breakfast with his new live-in guest, Dexter Dent. Nearly 20 years ago, Thomas watched his 10-year-old son get shot to death by a small-time thug named Joe Chill. He hunted Chill, and he killed Chill. But that wasn't enough, so he found everyone who reminded him of that cowardly criminal and killed them as well. It wasn't long ago that he met a man named Barry Allen who told him that this world shouldn't exist, that the past had been changed, and that the present was a twisted nightmare of the truth. Barry said that Martha and he were the ones who were supposed to die, not Bruce. That Bruce would grow up to become the Batman. So, Thomas and Barry had put things back to the way they were supposed to be, and yet Thomas exists, and somehow Aquaman is involved. Thomas informs Oswald to mind the boy, and then he returns to his cave to try and understand what exactly is happening. Could Barry be trying to save his mother again? Maybe the reverse flash altered time. But even trying to piece those together wouldn't make any sense. What about Aquaman killing this universe's Barry Allen? How does he know what's going on? So he will go and find out what he knows or he'll gut the fish where he stands. But deep down in Aquaman's prison, Wonder Woman sits tied up. She begins to quietly whisper as they begin to talk about all the people that her Amazonians have killed. As they lean in to hear what she is stating, she bites off one of the Atlanteans' slimy tentacles and spits it into the water. The other guard laughs, telling the one that had the bite happen that he shouldn't have been that close to her to begin with and that they should leave. But that's when they both realize that there's something in the water. Seconds later, Thomas Wayne surfaces up, shooting both Atlanteans in the head. Wonder Woman is confused. Batman, I thought you were dead. Thomas tells her, so did I, but I didn't come here for you. I need to borrow that magic lasso of yours. I will kill you if you try to take it. I know that. I also know that that lasso is the only thing keeping you tied to that pole. Then what? And because I need information from Aquaman, I'm asking you if I can borrow it. In exchange, you'll get to live. Maybe you'll even have enough time to free your sisters before this island sinks into the sea. Wonder Woman asks him. Then what? I retreat back to Themyscira? Forget my war with the rest of the world? Thomas tells her. No, you can do whatever you want. What happens to the rest of the world doesn't matter to me. Now do we have a deal? Moments later in the throne room, Aquaman sits with his trident and stares at the ocean orb, waiting. Wonder Woman's lasso is whipped around his neck and Thomas comes out from behind the curtains. Why did you send an assassin to kill Barry Allen? Aquaman struggles, but grabs the slack, throwing Thomas up and onto the ground. And under the lasso's influence, he informs Batman that whoever sent the scavenger wasn't him. Now, I'm going to tear your head from your shoulders. Aquaman pulls on the lasso, flinging Thomas towards him, punching him in the neck. But as this is happening, Thomas's comms turn on and Oswald asks, Boss, does this thing even work? 
Thomas coughs. <coughs> I'm a little busy right now. I know, but the casino, there was a bomb and it's been leveled. The casino is gone. Aquaman uncoils the lasso, throwing it to the ground, asking, Do you think that you are the first to come and try and stop me to save the world? I am saving the world! Thomas crawls to his knees, asking, Did you not send Scavenger? And the casino, stupid. Someone wanted me out of Gotham. I've been played. Aquaman walks over to the ocean orb, telling him, you were a fool to release Wonder Woman. She will burn this world to the ground. You know that. But she can do what she wants. Her and the Amazons will die on the island. It sinks as soon as I touch my trident to the... My trident? Where? At that moment, there's a low thunk as Wonder Woman takes the trident and stabs Aquaman in the back. His body slumps to the ground and Wonder Woman tells him that his reign is over. And so is Man's. He was a fool. She loved him. With his last breath, Aquaman tells her that he loved Mara, his only queen. Wonder Woman then turns to Thomas, telling him that their deal is done unless he wishes to try and stop her too. But Thomas takes the ocean orb, telling her that he got his answers. And with that, Thomas leaves Wonder Woman to her own devices. But back with Batman in his world, Flash runs into the Batcave asking if everything is okay. He felt something strange. Batman looks at Flash, asking him what's going on, and Flash tells him that Thawne is back. The reverse Flash has returned. He tried to tap into the Speed Force again, and it spit him back out. He tracked him here, but now he's masking his trail somehow. Thawne's trail ends here. Batman goes back to his computer, stating that the defenses would have picked up a speedster individual. And Flash is right, so I'm just going to take a quick look around just in case. After this, I have a meeting with Jay, and if it's too much for us, we'll call in the League and the Society. It just feels like something is disturbing time. And we don't know who, and we don't know how. We need to get to the bottom of it, Batman. As Flash is zipping around the cave, though, Corky tells Batman that the Flashes are going to figure out what's going on. It's not too late to undo what he's doing. Batman looks at the snow globe and tells him, Yes, it is. Back over with Thomas Wayne, though, he returns home to find that there have been three more murders since he's been gone. Seemingly all victims with no connection. They all do have a connection, because all these people were like Barry Allen. In this world, Nathaniel Adam is a 90-year-old astronaut who was never caught in the quantum detonation that made him Captain Adam. A nameless man claiming to be from the future was deemed insane and institutionalized instead of becoming the Lord of Time. And a petty thief named Percival Sutter was in prison instead of unlocking the secrets of a temporal manipulation as Dr. Time. All of the individuals are people who would help him figure out what's wrong with the timeline. But that's when Thomas realizes something else, or rather that someone, Roger Hayden, the psycho pirate, is still locked up in Arkham. From what Thomas knows about Bruce Wayne's reality, Roger Hayden is the only one whose memories never change despite reality changing around him. Hayden isn't actually paranoid when he says that someone is always trying to reshape the world. But that also brings up another problem. He wasn't the one to bring Hayden over to Arkham. Someone drugged him and left him at the doorstep a few days ago. Someone wanting Psycho Pirate to be found. And as Thomas Wayne enters the room to talk to Roger Hayden, he discovers that his life has been taken as a noose is attached to the ceiling. Same as before, a rookie could tell that it was designed to look like suicide, but Hayden doesn't need to talk to tell Thomas something. Thomas looks at the scribbles on the wall, reading the ramblings of a madman, but he does pick up on a few things. Bruce Wayne is Batman, Infinite Crises, Judy Garrick, Judy Garrick. Who's Judy Garrick? He also notices another thing that states, I don't think I'm the real Roger Hayden. What the hell does that even mean? I now have more questions than answers. But as he's attempting to leave Arkham Asylum, a woman stops him, and he recognizes her as Gilda Dent. She wants to know if her child is okay. Thomas just informs her that Dexter watched a harpoon go through his father's chest, and Gilda sighs, telling him to forget it. But before she turns away, she notices something in Thomas's hand, something that appears to be a casino chip. She heard about what happened, can she see it? Thomas hands over the poker chip, telling her that it's hers. Just tell him what happened in Hayden's cell. She takes it and examines it, stating that she didn't see anything, but she heard a strangulation. It's how her own daughter died. She hung herself. She wanted to cremate her daughter and Harvey was against it, but eventually in the end, she won. What about you? Did you bury Bruce? Thomas stares in silence. 
Gilda screams that it was the least thing he could have done after what he did. Answer her! Thomas asks, what did I do? She tells him that he drove his wife insane. It started before his son's birth. Was it the drinking and the sleeping around that got to her? Or did Thomas Wayne just ignore Martha? You were always such a bad father. In a fit of rage, Thomas punches the small door window and Gilda bursts out laughing. Is that all? I can hit harder than that. Just watch. As she bashes her face against the small window and the glass over and over again and while Thomas watches, he quietly says that it doesn't matter. She screams at him that it matters to her. The pain is real. Pain matters. Sometimes it's the only thing that does. Thomas hurries to the rooftop, telling himself that no, this is not his life. I fought to change it. I thought I did. None of this matters because it's wrong. Even if no one else could see it, I know that it's wrong. I'll make sure that none of this exists. I'll erase it all. But damn if it doesn't feel real. He heads back home, hearing a woman calling out for help, but he sees a group of thugs staring at the woman. Without a second thought, he begins to take out the thugs one by one, when one of them, the Captain Boomerang of this world, pulls out a gun, telling him that he'll do it. Thomas kneels closer, grabbing the barrel, holding it to his forehead. Try it! Pull the trigger! Now! Boomerang begins to cry, stating that he will, but his hand trembles, and Thomas takes the gun from him, pointing it back. It doesn't matter. But before he could pull that trigger, something throws him into the wall. And he looks up to see the Superman stepping forward with glowing red eyes. You hurt that. You're wrong. Everything matters. Back over in Bruce's world, Corky stares at the snow globe, stating that the storm is coming. And he's trapped inside of a little globe. That the snow globe represents the world being shaken up, turned upside down, but everything gets put back to where it should be. And that his father is also stuck in a snow globe. Being stuck in a snow globe is really how it all is. Batman tells him, maybe, but being in a snow globe is also safe. Inside of the globe, the snowman never melts. Corky then continues to inform him that the globe and the watch are drenched in tachyon and stuff, and whoever they belong to, whoever the divine continuum took it from, and then Rip Hunter took that from, is going to come looking for it soon. And hopefully, Dr. Hunter and the others will get here sooner to back up Batman before that owner of that globe is here. Because if he shows up, boy is Batman going to be sorry about this whole darned thing. The alleyway goes silent, as Subject One is staring at Thomas. But Thomas barely holds himself up, telling the alien, Stay back! Behind them, Boomerang grabs his gun, opening fire, but as the bullets just plink off the Superman, he turns back, telling him, Leave or burn. Boomerang barely gets to his feet before running, and Thomas asks, Why is he here? As Superman tells him, Because I need help. No. Superman asks again. Thomas spins back, punching him, nearly breaking his fist on the alien's face. But as Thomas recoils, he says that there is nothing that can make him stop what he's doing. Do you understand? Nothing! Before Thomas could finish his sentence, Superman smacks him so hard that he falls over, knocked out. Later, as he begins to wake up, he's dreaming about Bruce, and he finds himself on a bed of flowers. He sits up seeing Poison Ivy walking towards him with breakfast, and asks, Where's the alien? Ivy tells him that he doesn't like being called that. Thomas asks again, but Ivy says that he doesn't scare her anymore, since he killed her. She's become one with the Parliament of Trees. Thomas shrugs her off, telling her that she's as crazy as she ever was. She always has been. But where are we? Ivy guides Thomas through the overgrown trees, telling him that this is the oasis, that she and Superman helped create this place for the displaced like him, a home for those that have none. Did he make this place? She tells him no, but it was his idea. But it was Jason Woodrow who built it. You know, the swamp thing. Thomas walks into the next room and Superman again tells him, I need your help. You said that before you gave me the concussion. Bring me back to Gotham. Now. You must see it first. And Superman reaches out for a crystal. What are those? But Superman stops him again. Just watch and listen. The vines begin to extend and take the form of a person. That vine person says that if they are receiving this, son, that means you've survived. And it means that 
we could too. Krypton is dying, but there is a hope. You've been sent along with other children to find a new world for our species. Your mission upon reaching adulthood is to use your powers from the Yellow Sun to disarm the humans in advance of our arrival. And then we will conquer them as father and son, together. Do you understand? Yeah, it says that there's going to be an invasion. How long do we have? Swamp Thing says that the green is weak in the darkness, but it still speaks. Five days. So Superman turns and asks, do you understand now? My father is coming here to enslave and take over. My father doesn't understand that these people are good people. Good? Those people imprisoned you, tortured you, and now your father is coming to destroy them so that you can have a future? Why stop him from doing that? Superman stops him. Because they matter. Their lives matter. Thomas turns and tells him, No, I have five days to complete my mission, but it has nothing to do with yours. Good luck. I'll find my own way home. But elsewhere, time has already begun to unravel as Commissioner Gigante looks down at her newest crime scene asking. Same thing? And the officer on the scene says pretty much. An incision from the neck to the navel. Body full of clock parts. The girl that owns the place, Iris West, says that he showed up out of nowhere and panicked. Gigante asks, any idea? And the officer says nothing. No name, no fingerprints in the system. This guy, Sophia. He just doesn't exist. She looks back down at the dead body of Eobard Thawne, stating that for someone who doesn't exist, he sure wears a lot of flashy threads. And that's when we see the reverse flash is dead, sprawled out. Later at the morgue, Thomas is looking over Eobard's body, telling himself that this man is a living paradox just like himself. One who exists when he shouldn't, but one who had great power. The power to manipulate the timeline permanently. Eobard went back in time and murdered Barry Allen's mother and somehow solidified history around that. He's the reason Allen attempted to change time in the first place. But it wasn't how Eobard was killed that was on Thomas's mind, it was why. Slowly, Thomas begins to make an incision, pulling out the small cogs and gears, reminding himself that he is doing this for Bruce. He collects the parts and heads back home, but before he can even enter the manor, Cobblepot runs out with a worried look on his face. Cobblepot doesn't answer as Thomas is asking, where is Dexter, the child that he rescued from Two-Face? Cobblepot says that he didn't think about it at first, but with all the news surrounding Arkham, he didn't think that Dexter would also want to go see his mother. The kid lost his sister to suicide, lost his father to murder. He doesn't need to know that he lost his mother to madness as well. They need to do something. So Thomas begins to lay out the parts, stating that he thought Dexter might be able to help him as a witness to his father's death. But he was one step removed from the real killer. The clock gears that were inside the reverse flash hold the answer. Nothing else matters. Once I put all the gears back, I can fix it all. Thomas lays out the parts, putting the clock together, and he comes to a realization. One of the pieces that he has does not belong to this particular clock. The extra piece has a specific marking to determine what sort of clock it goes into, and Thomas knows exactly where. He hurries back to the cave to the grandfather clock in the manor, ripping off the faceplate to compare the pieces, and sees that they are identical. He stops for a moment. This, it's impossible. Cobblepot comes over asking him what's wrong, and Thomas looks at him, telling him, I know who the killer is. But while Thomas comes to the horrible realization of who that person is, over in the metaverse, the snow globe that Bruce has taken begins to shake and crack with a very peculiar laughing sound. Bruce asks if that's temporal energy, and Corky asks if he's kidding. It's much more than that. It's blue shift power. It was created when the Omniverse comes into direct contact with hypertime, when space meets time. It's the most dangerous energy on either side of the divine continuum. As the globe begins to rupture, Bruce asks, why is it happening? Have you ever read Shakespeare's The Tempest? Of course you did. So you know if there's a big storm like the one in that snow globe, all these awful people get stuck on a deserted island where all the bad things happen to them. It's not as much fun as Swiss Family Robinson, which is one of my top favorites, but there's a really neat quote from it. Like, good wombs have born bad sons. Of course, the other way around is true. 
See, your mom, she had a lot of secrets, had a lot of problems, things you didn't know about, things from her past, things you didn't realize your dad was going to face in there. You see, I warned you, I really did. You don't know everything about everything this time. You don't know the truth about your mom. As the metaverse itself begins to grow unstable, back in the paradox flashpoint world that shouldn't exist, Thomas is rushing through the traffic, telling himself that Bruce would have figured this out after the first murder. He couldn't see what was right in front of his face. Martha is the answer. While Thomas is piecing things together, Cobblepot shouts over the comms, asking if he is even listening. Thomas yells back, what do you want? And Cobblepot tells him that Dexter tried to break Gilda out of Arkham. He needs to keep Dexter away from his mother. Thomas tells him that the priority is Martha Wayne, but Cobblepot doesn't understand. He's read the files on Gilda, the ones that Judge Dent sealed. There are two faces to Gilda. Dent is his wife's dark side and covered up her crimes against her own children. Dexter's sister didn't kill herself, Master Wayne. Thomas pauses for a moment. It doesn't matter. But Cobblepot shouts, what the hell is wrong with you? I went along with all of this because you wanted to save your son. But Dexter is an innocent kid. He's no different than Bruce, except he's still alive. You're wrong, Cobblepot. I know this won't make any sense to you now, but it's all going away tonight. You've been a good friend, Oswald. Thank you. Batman out. Seconds later, Thomas arrives at Arkham, jumping through the skylit window with Martha stating, hello, honey. <laughs> She rushes towards him, trying to stab him, but Thomas shoots the knife out of her hand and then continues his charge. Why did you do it? Why did you kill them? But Martha springs a second knife, cutting into his cape. You'll find out soon enough! Across the way, Dexter and Gilda hurry into the elevator with Dexter stating, I thought I'd lost you, Mom. And she kneels down, hugging him. Oh no, we're going to be together forever. But her words begin to twist at the end as the elevator doors shut. Stop, Mom! Please, that hurts! Dexter calls out. Thomas grabs Martha, throwing her into her room, locking them in, asking, How is this even possible? You're supposed to be dead! Martha asks, When is he talking about? When we last saw each other? Or what? 30 years ago in Crime Alley? See, I've been wondering that myself. Ever since the man with the golden mask was talking about Bruce. I heard him while I was hiding within these walls. But I made him tell me everything before I killed him. He talked about how this world was changed from what it should be, how Bruce is supposed to be Batman, and the Joker. <laughs> Can you imagine? The Joker's a man! A secret passage begins to open, and as Thomas begins to walk down it, Martha stabs him in the side. You can learn a lot from here, like what makes people tick. Mr. Hayden sounded crazy. All this talk of other worlds, about how you were destroying this one to save our son. Oh, what I wouldn't do to save our son! Martha pushes Thomas into the next room. You would do anything to save Bruce, wouldn't you? As Thomas looks up, he sees Martha standing next to the time sphere, along with the pictures of all the people who could influence time, the ones that she'd killed. Martha goes on. I know you have questions, like where are we? After you thought you left me for dead, I woke up. I found a stream that took me out of the cave and it led into the sewers, and then to here. It was a lonely place to die, so, I didn't. That's where I heard his voice drifting down the cleansing rain. This world shouldn't be, it said. So I hunted down the people that would potentially know how to change time, and I took everything from them, leaving a trail for you to follow while I built this. I hate this place just as much as you do. But we're going back in time to ensure that we die and Bruce lives, and all it will cost is an entire universe. What's it going to be, Thomas? <laughs> Meanwhile, back with Bruce and Corky over in the metaverse, the snow globe is leaking energy and Corky tells him that the globe can't contain the hyper time. His father will never accept the world that he put him into. And if they don't stop this right now, they are all doomed. But in a flash, Rip Hunter appears and tells Bruce that he knows why he is here. Bruce tells him that he won't let Rip interfere. And Corky says, you can't do anything to stop the boss. I warned you and you didn't listen. And now you're up a creek without a paddle. Rip Hunter now stands before Bruce Wayne as he's beginning to process everything. The world that he created could quite possibly destroy the multiverse. And this man, Rip Hunter, is an arrogant man, more so than Lex Luthor or Hal Jordan. 
The same goes to the other Time Masters. All who claim to know everything about everyone when it comes to the past, present, and future. Could they simply be lying to him? Because this globe is imbued with coronal energy that was connected to Dr. Manhattan. And this globe contains the Flashpoint. A timeline that was never supposed to exist. And it's the only environment that could keep his father from evaporating into nothingness. Bruce tells Rip to take Corky and go about their business. You do not want to challenge me. Not this time. Rip sighs. Look, I know this is extremely personal for you, but imprisoning the flashpoint inside of that globe is like trying to keep a tornado in a jelly jar. It's only a matter of time before that glass shatters, Bruce. At that moment, there's a thunderous crack coming out of the globe, and Rip Hunter says that his father is rejecting the timeline, just like a body rejecting the organ. The truth that he didn't know about his mother has made things even worse. You are risking a temporal disaster, and there are other things your actions are affecting too. Like my work. Important work. Hand the globe to Corky and let this go. Let Thomas Wayne go. Let your father go! This is your final warning, Bruce. Bruce thinks about it for a moment. Rip and the others claim to know every detail about everyone's lives. Tales of how and when they die. But they can't share any of it because their mission is to protect history, not interfere with it. Even though that's what they're doing right now. Bruce jumps over, grabbing the globe, telling Rip that he is in his house. And I didn't invite you. Inside of the globe, Martha tells Thomas that they need to get the show on the road. We can use the Time Sphere, which I designed and built before I gutted all of those time travelers. We can go back in time. We can save our son. Together. You swore an oath. Till death do we part, Thomas. And I'm going to see that through. <laughs> this is what you want, right? To turn our lives into a bad dream. To erase our painful existence of grief and emptiness. To end it all. Martha takes Thomas's hand and pulls him up, kissing him. But Thomas pulls away. No. The people that you murdered. Why are you worried about them? You said it yourself. None of this is real. None of this matters. But a voice chimes in. That's right. So what are we waiting for? Let's destroy it all. Gilda Dent, the wife of Harvey Dent, steps in holding a gun to Dexter's head, her own child. I don't want to be split in two like this anymore. Harvey's the one who's supposed to be the monster, not me. But back in the proper timeline, Batman throws a batarang. I won't let you kill my father. But Rip disintegrates, telling him, and I won't let you risk tying the timeline into knots for a man who is supposed to be dead. There's two ways that this ends, and I've seen them both. You can help me release the flashpoint so that I can reintegrate it back into hypertime and put your father to rest, or I can do it myself. Then I'll punish you in the past, present, and future. But inside of Flashpoint, Martha asks again, what does the future hold for us, Thomas? It was born out of grief. Barry Allen's lifelong mourning for his mother. That's what permeated this version of reality when it was recreated. Loss, anger, and pain. Everything that is happening, the only use that this tragic world has ever had, was to show us how broken it could all become. So let's rescue everyone and send them to their better lives. All we have to do is climb into the time sphere and flip the switch. Thomas looks at the time sphere and the Dexter asks, if you did that, what would happen to me? Gilda tells him that she would be freed from existence and so would he. Am I going to die? After a long pause, Thomas looks at the young child. You won't die. You'll have never lived. Martha tells Thomas to hurry up and get in. Please, nothing else matters now. None of this will ever have happened. Thomas hesitates. We didn't have a choice to save Bruce that night. But now, right now we do. She asks if he's asking her to choose him over their son. She, she can't, she can't do that. Thomas lunges at Gilda to try and take her gun, but as he gets closer, she hits a switch that blows up the time sphere. 
as Thomas is thrown to the side, Gilda yells that she doesn't need the time sphere to erase things that shouldn't be. Her son isn't supposed to exist, and neither are they. And if you won't end it like it's supposed to be, then I will! She pulls the trigger on Dexter, and Martha grabs her from behind, pulling the gun as Gilda shouts, What are you doing?! Martha turns the gun towards Gilda, being a fool, and she pulls the trigger. The entire building begins to shake, and Gilda's boy falls to the ground, with Martha looking at Dexter. That may have been a touch traumatizing. As the building begins to collapse, Thomas quickly grabs Martha and Dexter and takes them out, just in time to avoid being trapped beneath it all. And as they all get outside, they look at the ruins of Arkham and Dexter looks up asking, where is the snow coming from? Martha looks at Thomas and without either of them saying anything, they both hold Dexter's hand. But back in the proper timeline, the snow globe's light fades and Corky asks, what happened? The light went out. They gotta get back to the lab, right? Before Bruce screws the universe up? Rip tells him no. And Corky asks why not? And Bruce stops them. Because my father proved you both wrong. You're lying! Corky shouts out, but Rip confirms it, stating that the globe has stabilized, even with a living paradox inside. Rip turns to Bruce and tells him that he gambled the entire universe on his father accepting a world without him. Irresponsibility doesn't even begin to describe what you've done. Bruce tells him no, but the odds are in my favor. It was all in his letter. Back inside of the globe, after some time has passed, Thomas is suiting up, and Dexter looks at his vest. Why Robin? He says, looking at his Robin outfit, and Thomas tells him, it's a family name. Nearby, inside of her cell, Martha Wayne smiles, looking at them, with bandages over her Glasgow smile. Looking good, boys? Dexter asks if they're going to tell anyone that Mrs. Wayne didn't die in the cave and Thomas tells him that they're not. Just then, the news stations begin to report on the Kryptonian invasion. But before Thomas and Dexter can leave, Martha stops him, telling him to make sure to tie his shoes. As Thomas kneels down, Martha goes on stating that he has to make sure and have fun up there. And if they need help finding Kryptonite, just let her know. I still have connections. Now, let's kill some Kryptonians! But back over in the proper timeline, and in the currently destroyed time lab, Jeff and Bonnie arrive to help clean up with Bonnie asking what they're going to do about Bruce. Rip says that Bruce is going to have his hands full with his mother's family soon. Not warning him will be his punishment. Bonnie says that's fair, but she still doesn't understand why they let Bruce Wayne keep that globe. And Rip tells her that after the way that they've been compromised, it'll be safer in the cave than the lab. She asks, what about the 13? Rip says the time capsules have failed and they've all been pulled back into history. It's a rebuilding around them. Let's just pray the reintegration back into the 1940s without incident. Bonnie looks at all of the empty capsules and asks, what about the Justice Society? Rip says that the Justice Society will have to handle Degaton. They've already got nostalgia to worry about. But somewhere else, a young woman by the name of Cleopatra Pack is attempting to break into a room and not having much success. She looks at her failed work and sighs. Well, if we can't do things this way, we're gonna have to find the Watchmen another way. Huh, bubs? And Cleopatra's Red Tigers let out a loud roar. And that is the story of Flashpoint Beyond. It's on a pretty big cliffhanger and we don't know where it's going. A new book has started up called JSA and something involving Stargirl, which may lead into the ramifications of this, but until things start happening, we don't really know how much they're going to be directly connected. But I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell as we bring you these big full stories on a regular basis, normally every Monday, but we're trying to increase that output. Thank you guys, and I'll see you next time right here.